Hello and welcome to this week's episode of A Letter to My Children podcast. This is where we take a deep dive into other people's mindsets, stories of the past, trying to make content that will help the future generations if they ever get stuck to just get out of those sticky ruts and achieve what they want to do. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about an, a massive lesson that I had to learn for myself and also something that now with my Identity Unlock program we're really helping people to just see how they can connect better with their ideal client and that is knowing yourself to know your ideal client. Now many people that have spoken to me on photo shoots and even when I was going through the process of obviously finding this person who I am today it was going through that journey of okay, well, what am I missing in my life? For me, I needed something to work towards. I've always needed to strive to something bigger. And the problem that I often had was that I had blocks in the way. And uh, the, in the honest answer of it, without those blocks, I never would have been the person I am today. But also looking back at those times in my life, those blocks were holding me back from just doing what I knew I could do. And Going through the experiences of feeling frustrated, like when my old boss just wouldn't give me a promotion, I knew that I wanted to earn more money and I also knew that I wanted to provide a, a nicer life for Jade and I. And the importance here was of like, could I get a bit more money to get a bigger house? We had somewhere nicer to live. And I just remember going, if I could get a £2,000 pay rise or £2,500 pay rise, that would roughly give me 10 grand's worth of extra house. And at the time, that was like huge. This was going to be the big thing that would change things. We could get a slightly nicer house or maybe in a slightly nicer area or a, a garage that comes with it or a bit more garden or something that would just gave us that little bit more. So I felt like I added a bit more value. And he said no. He, I, I gave him a whole list of these like amazing things that I'd done for the company and bits that I didn't even have to do like making them more money and saving them time and just all these little bits that I'd added up and I wrote a whole list of them down thinking like I want to provide as much value as possible here to deliver what I know I should be worth and then also in turn that should be worth even more to the company knowing that if I was providing this value and I was doing this and I did it over time it was just going to compound into more there's me thinking practical business-minded and also trying to be a solution-based person and he said let me go away and have a look and then the only way I was told about this was literally walking through the corridor. He turned around and I said, is there any news on the kind of pay suggestions or anything like that? And he just said, no, there's nothing we can do. And that was it. There was no like, let's come and have a chat in my office or let's talk about this. It was just no. And I remember going off and being in a room where I was just, I sat by myself and I think, what have I got to do to go right in this place? Like, I'm so stuck. Like, I just want to do more. I just want to just be the person I've always wanted to be. And Obviously, I blamed him because he was my boss and there was no fight to all, like even the want to try and make anything better out of it. And I know at the time that, you know, bosses are just constricted by, by what management tell them they can do and what spaces there is for these things. And I just remember feeling like, why am I here? Not as in like in life, but like, why am I in this building anymore? Like, it doesn't help me. It doesn't serve me. And so going through this journey of obviously like putting myself through the weight loss journey finding a new partner, building a new relationship, getting into our own house, set my own business up, letting it scale, uh, finding ways to scale, having the pandemic where I had to deal with like nearly being bankrupt. All these things have taught me so much about who I am and how I react to things because it's not necessarily the situation that's the problem. It's more often the fact that the way we deal with the situation is the problem. So let's say, for example, I go up to someone and I compliment and go, wow, you look incredible today. Like you look really happy. And they instantly turn around and said, yeah, but I'm still not weighing the weight I want to weigh." Or I turn around and say, wow, like what an amazing thing you've done with your business. And they go, yeah, but we've still got a lot of issues. You're having something positive happen and instantly you want to turn around with a negative. So you're almost not accepting that that positive thing is there or that's how it's seen. And... So looking at all these journeys that I've gone through in my life and what I've experienced allowed me to see that actually I was often looking at things in the wrong way. I was often looking at them in a way of like, oh, well, I just don't get that because I'm here or I would never achieve that because I'm just not the person that's done that before. So when I started losing weight and I started seeing the progress happening for me and then obviously leading on to meeting Jade and so on, that for me allowed me to see I could 
do something. I could create my own destiny, my own future. And the more that I believed in this and then took the leap eventually to actually leave full-time employment and go on this journey of what, you know, the last four or five years for me has been just mind-blowing. If I told you that we'd reach multiple six figures in the business, I started a new business that seems to be an instant success with the people that started working on it and the results they're coming back with are just phenomenal and within a week. The lives have changed. The, you know, the fact I now have two children you know, just the, the space to have it and the cost and the mindset and the, just the belief and the, the want for it and everything that's come out of it. Jade and I have gone through loads and loads of good stuff. And yeah, like as any relationships, you have your odd little things there. But like Jade and I have got such a solid relationship that we don't actually have many issues. Often it's either tiredness or just the fact of lack of communication. And so we've gone through all of these things and I've learned so much about how I dealt with each situation. How did I look at it? How did I deal with that situation instead of me thinking all these things why is it happening to me why is my vat bill so big why is you know my growth slowing down why is it happening to me it was a case of how do I react and deal with this how do I put myself across as someone who holds that identity of someone who deals with the problem not lets it impact them and then dwells them into a corner and it's so common with people that they do that. They see a problem come up, they see an issue. It's, maybe it's a growth issue. Like I've spoken to quite a few coaches recently who wanted to take on another coach. And yet letting that control over to someone else is like something that's really difficult because it's their baby and they've grown it and they're, they're trying to see how they can make it work and they're never going to be as good as them. And they're not going to care as much. And obviously the answer is, is they're most likely not going to care as much because it's not their baby. But also they could do a lot of jobs and be a, a lot of things to you that you need to have in order for you to go and scale and do the other stuff. So actually, the jobs they can do, even though they're not going to be as good as you, for your client, for your client, for your customer, for the people that are around you, they're perfect. For us, like we're looking at getting a cleaner in, and Jay said, but they never do as good a job as what I do. I said, the only reason why you do a, as good a job is because you know you've done it. When someone else has done it, you're always looking for a problem. You're always looking for an issue, whereas if you know it's been cleaned and you know they've gone around and they've scrubbed around everything and you know that it's cleaner than it was, then that job is done. Maybe it isn't to your level, but what you're actually saying here is, I know I do it, and then I know it's done, and I know it's done to the level I want. And then if you can't trust someone else to do it to a good enough level or find or talk to them about how you want it done, then it's the fact that you're the problem. You're the, way, you're the reason why that's not happening because you're not communicating, you're not sharing the way that it should be done. And all the way through this journey that I've gone on to launching this new Identity Unlock business, because of the fact of the amount of people that I've seen and the amount of people that have gone through these huge struggles and not being able to get past them, it made me think about what I've had to go through. This time last year, I had a real issue with sales. I just couldn't sell to anyone, right? And okay, the business trickled over because we had some good things in place. But I felt lost. I felt lost in what I was trying to do. And it turned out after the business coach I was working with was trying to get me to go down a route that didn't really fit who I was because I've never really chased after money. But actually by being really good at what I do, I've found ways of making good money and then that's impacted bigger things. So instead of me just being like money, 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 it's like, no, I can make you feel good, which often has a knock-on effect, or I can make you look good, which has a knock-on effect with you making more money, hence why they're willing to pay me money. And when we launched the Identity Unlock program, and I was talking to my business coach about this and like how we create this, the word that kept coming up was identity. People didn't know who they were. And when you start a business, you typically can see a flaw with inside of something. So you can see an issue that's not being there. Uh, to give you an example, with my photography business, I could often see that people look good in the photos, but you never really felt like you got their personality out of it. You can never really see that person just laughing because they were laughing because something was funny. Or that girl that felt attractive actually really looked like she felt attractive instead of it just she had a good body on her. And that was where I saw a missing link in it. I often looked at people's things and I thought, I just don't feel that I get that vibe off that photo. Sure, she's got a great body. Sure, he looks strong. But do I get that connection? Do I get that thing between it? And that was what I found was often missing. And then, so in my photography, instead of just turning someone to stand that way and do this, it was building up that rapport with someone and having those communication 
uh, links and also ways of communicating that could get someone to smile, that could get someone to feel confident to, you know, if someone wanted to look really sexy, they, they could come out with that type of look and you felt it. You looked at the picture and went, wow, like, I feel what you're feeling. And so I knew that it was the missing link. So I had to create myself a way of being able to get that out of people, which was being approachable, listen, and then understand what people were struggling with. But the common problem was the way that they looked at the problem, like we're going back to. So they would look and go, yeah, but I can't do sexy or I can't do strong. Or some guys would say, I struggle with that whole masculine thing. Like, I just feel like it's easier if I just smile. When you can break that out of someone and you can change the way they look at it, they can suddenly see options and ways of being able to handle it or grow with it or use it as their story. And what was fascinating to me was the amount of people that would then go on to say that they've done a photo shoot and then they've gone through a transformation and look what they've achieved. And many people would just look at, oh, their body weight's changed and they look leaner and they've got abs and, you know, they're more muscular. But the thing that I found that my clients were getting results with was the fact that they were saying, but I've forgotten about all that stuff because I feel phenomenal. I feel like I can run through a wall. Like female clients would message me back saying, I actually let myself be present with my husband for the first time in years which to me was like, wow, that, that person's coming out of you just from having that experience. And that's what allowed me to realise that actually the more that I understood myself and what I was about and what I was able to create with my clients and that space of just feeling comfortable and confident and being able to express yourself with no judgement but someone who just wants you to be that person authentically, to be unapologetically yourself. When I created that space for people, people thrived. And... They were going into sales calls, not trying to have to follow a script that they thought was going to be perfect, but they were just talking from the heart. And people were signing to them because they were just like, I believe you, I trust you, I feel you. And so by being able to create that space for people and then understanding that that's what I've created for myself and knowing myself that actually I often felt like I didn't fit in. I often felt like I wasn't quite in the right space and things weren't quite right for me. But that's where I thrived because it allowed me to space to go, what do I need to think differently? How do I need to look at this to get a result? How do I get to the end place that I want to get to? And if you're never allowing yourself to think like that, then how are you ever going to understand what your clients are going through? If you're not sitting there going, my clients are me five years ago, lost, confused, broken, had issues, had... Um, adversity that happened that I've never dealt with up until now and they're sitting there thinking how do I deal with it you have to be the leader you have to be someone who can actually create that to happen so people can see you and go wow you are the leader of being able to do this and through my photography career and through everything I've done I, I often got the comment of saying people saying to me it's so much more than just a photo shoot like you get so much more out of it which made me then start thinking, well, if I listen to what people are telling me about the fact that the, the conversation of the photo shoot was probably more impactful than the photos, then surely if I just focused on talking to more people and having more communications and allowing people the space to express themselves, we could do even more. We could do bigger. We could do better. There could be even more out of people. But it was only through looking back at my own journey and understanding my true values of who I was, why I was doing all of this stuff. You know, it wasn't just to make more money. It was to actually give my daughter and my son and my wife a better life. It was to be able to provide opportunities for people. My video, uh, my video editor, he's now doing even more and working with even more clients from just giving him the space to give, give it a chance for working with me and teaching him a few things. There's now people that have spoken to me and said, like, if this really grows this business, I'm a therapist. I'd love to be a part of your, your, your mission because I just love your energy and I love the way you think. So when you understand yourself better, when you spend the time to instead of keep criticising yourself, but actually go, what am I really good at? What is it that people really like about me? What is it that I know that I could improve? And if I tie my adversity and my journey and my story with that good stuff and then just work out a way to get the bad or the things that I don't deal with so well dealt with, I could be onto a winner here. I could really create something powerful. And... By connecting with that for me and really taking that step back and going, who am I? What is my mission? What is my purpose? Where am I heading? 
and what impact do I want to have on the world, then I will truly be able to help the people that I want to help. Hey guys, Ben here. I hope you're doing well. So listen, if you are stuck, if you're in that place where you're not quite getting the result that you want and you also know you're capable of more, all I want to do here is say, drop me a DM on Instagram with the word podcast. Let's have a chat. Let's see if we can remove those chains, get you to be the person you want to be. Take all that frustration and the procrastination out of running your business and allow you to think with clarity and be the person you've always wanted to be. DM me the word podcast if you want to have a chat. So instead of just giving that one bit of advice, it was giving them a vision of something that was more and allowing them to see how they could create it instead of just telling them, follow this step. Because for me, I've never really followed a plan. I struggle with it, right? I've never been good with systems. But I'm someone who authentically just seems to like pick up things and just adapt it into my way of thinking because I know that my mission and my journey and my purpose and the reason why I do everything is so much more than just a script or just a kind of email chain. For me, the reason why business coaches are phenomenal is they are so good at those types of things. For me, I'm good at using my vision to create things. I'm good at seeing how other opportunities that could be created from something that isn't quite there, that isn't quite happening yet, and there's opportunities for it. And me using my adversity of being overweight, being bullied, never feeling good enough, being restricted in my career, um, being told no, being told I was too nice, being told that um, you know I was just never going to amount to anything. I wanted to prove all of those people wrong. And so what I did is I listened and I went, let's take action. Let's not overthink this. Let's just do those things and prove people wrong. And sure, I did use them as a motion forward. And they often say, don't do that because then you're just trying to challenge that. But actually, if that helps you unlock that side of you, and now you can see what you can do when you just put your mind to it, then you just go, okay, well, now what do I focus on? So you sometimes need that adversity to have a story to tell. And you've got to not be scared of telling it because it's your story, it's your truth. So when you can talk about your story and your truth and you can say, this is what I struggled with. You know, I had real issues with being overweight, not feeling confident and just not feeling like I could be the best version of myself. And I think we've all had those moments where we've gone, wow, I'm really not in the right place here. But it's how you deal with the situation, it's how you look at it, and then how you understand that about yourself so that you can better impact and connect with the clients that you want to connect with. So this might have felt like a bit, a bit of a rant, but actually it's something that I really have realised in myself that when I stayed true to who I was and what I felt good about and didn't worry about anyone else, and I understood myself better and what I wanted to achieve and why and how and what the long-term vision was. It took away all the, the little steps. It took away all the little issues. And it allowed me to think bigger and greater. And then more people were attracted to that. And I think for a lot of you people out there, if you're listening to this, you're struggling with that attraction thing of, am I doing good enough here? Is this right? Is this great? Then you need to think bigger. You need to take that time to really understand who you are and what you're about and then share that mission with people, share that journey, share that story because that is where the gold is and that is where the people that you really want to work with, that you connect with, that have a similar story to you so you're all on the same boat. It's so much easier to think in that one clear straight line. This is who I deal with because they've had the same problems as me and this is how I dealt with it but there's also four or five different ways that you could deal with it. Then you're a solution-based person who has opportunities to change the world but also really know who you're working with to simplify the process so that you can enjoy running your business and actually just probably make a, a bigger profit out of just feeling like you do the right thing instead of just trying to chase the money because you think that's what you need to do, okay? This has been a little bit of a rant today, but I hope the fire, the passion, the journey of like just knowing yourself and knowing what your strengths are to then better connect with the people that you work with will inspire you to do more and connect with more people. So please just try and spend the time when you can to really dig deep into who you are and what you're about. If you do struggle with it, I'm not going to do a shameless plug here, but obviously this is what I do for a living. Sometimes you need that person to bounce across and just see the patterns and see the connection. So if that is you, feel free to reach out. But like I said, I want this to be something where you sit there and go, who am I? What do I want to achieve? How do I connect with those people better by being more authentically myself and not being scared of being me? I hope that helps. I hope you have a good day. I look forward to sharing another podcast with you very soon.